when I come in every morning, um, I have to keep in mind the students that I'm teaching come, come, come from a completely different place than I'm coming from. And I have no idea what they're bringing, what kind of issues they're bringing to the classroom. Um, so the first thing I have to bring is, um, is awareness. Um, I have to make, I have to be able to make connections with students if I'm going to teach them, if they're going to respect me. I have to respect um, where they are, what they're dealing with, um, their learning motivation. The subject matter, of course, is important, but again, I have to connect it to their lives. If, if they see no connection to, from their learning to what they're going to be living now and in the near future and farther down the road, I don't think they'll be invested in learning it. And so they have to trust me. I have to trust them. I have to, they have to listen to me. I have to hear their feedback. And again, I have to validate it. You know, what they feel is important. I was, to be honest, I was somewhat apprehensive. Um, middle school is like a different animal compared to elementary. Um, so I, I had to prepare myself, um, getting to know the curriculum. I knew I would have to invest lots and lots of extra time. I'm, I'm sort of the expert fifth grade teacher, so, and I got that way through, um, you know, investing time and energy after school over the summer, getting to know the fifth grade curriculum and um, the fifth grade targets, and I knew nothing about the seventh grade. Um, and I was given about hmm, maybe two days and a weekend to prepare um, to go into the class. I had a lot of support from the other middle school teachers, of course. And um, we have a reading specialist, math specialist, who helped me out. In terms of the kids, um, leaving the fifth grade was incredibly difficult. You know, they're like my, my children at, by November. Um, and so I was heartbroken. On the other hand, um, I tried to put a positive spin on making this transition. I knew it was only going to be temporary, so that was helpful. I knew a lot of the kids, I'd had them in fifth grade, and so that was okay. Um, that made it a little less scary. It was like a big party in the room before I was in there. So now here, God, this teacher's going to come and make new rules. And, but then they had a chance then to process it over the weekend. And they were ready for me Monday. I didn't get a lot of resistance, so to speak. And they knew me and knew I run a pretty strict ship, so to speak. Um, but I started with procedures, you know. Um, I had, that's one of the things that I worked on, especially the four days before I went in, more than the curriculum was we need a procedure for coming in the classroom, we need a procedure for getting breakfast, we need a procedure for transitions, and I needed to make it um, more at their level. So it was a little bit different than in the fifth grade classroom. There were some things that, you know, we don't have a recess procedure in seventh grade because seventh graders don't have a recess. Um, and yet they deserve and um, earn a privilege of being a little more free and independent of me. Um, and so I had a procedure for doing group work that was a little different than in fifth grade. And so I brainstormed as many different areas and we, and they helped in that area as well. You know, what other areas do we need procedures for? Um, and I gave them reasons for having procedures and we practiced them. And we practiced them. They, at first they thought that was pretty lame, but they've got them down, you know. Issues don't come up because of procedures. They, they need to know what they have to do. They need to know how to get materials. They need to know how to get help when they need help. They need to know, you know, how to turn in assignments, um, how to get their pencil sharpened, how to get pencils, you know. All of those different things they need to know 
you know, that there is a way to do that. And it seems nitpicky even, but, you know, prior to my being in that room, apparently it was a free-for-all, you know. You know, things were being taken. <laughs> or kids were getting up and walking around. Or going into the coat room and then things end up missing. And so that has to be procedures. Just like anything else. Just like... And that makes those things not become the issue. Then we can deal with learning issues or, you know, personal issues as they come up. The procedures aren't, don't become the issues anymore. We do a lot of group things, um, and that benefits me because then I can go around and work with three or four kids at one time and really know what they're getting. Um, I also have the, the raffle ticket system, that's sort of that immediate gratification kind of thing to help with transitions because that was something that we struggled with. I just give a direction and those kids that follow the first time, I scoot around the room and give them a raffle ticket and at the end of the day I have the student collect the raffle ticket. I pick five and they get a piece of candy. Sometimes I'll throw in a, I have movie passes so we'll have a surprise and I'll have a movie pass or I'll have something a little more valuable so to speak, other than a piece of candy, and they love it. They love it. You know, like I said, it's that immediate gratification. Um, it gets the other kids on task when they see me going around with the raffle tickets. We spend less time on that transition time. And I have a few kids that are on individual behavior notes um, per parent re request. And so they rate and I rate their behavior for all the different areas throughout the day and they earn points for that computer time because they just need a little extra support that way. I make lots and lots of phone calls. Um, we have report cards four times a year and then we have in between each report card is an interim report. Um, but I do make phone calls um, frequently, you know, and, and for good stuff too. And, a student has been struggling with homework and I've talked to the parent and they said okay well I'll help you out with that and make sure that he does it or whatever and then if it's improved I call and say thanks I appreciate that you know it's whatever you're doing keep doing it because I know that parents get tired you know it's hard to put that effort in all the time you know and I can again I have to empath empathize I, I have no s children I have three dogs <laughs> so you know, I just put them in a crate when they're bothering me. I can't do that with kids. <laughs> so I can't imagine, well, I, you know, I can imagine what it would be like to have three, four, or more children living in your house. Be they your kids or your grandkids or your nieces and nephews, you know, and working maybe one, two jobs, you know, dealing with the drama of a middle school student at home. I deal with it at school. I, you know, I know that it can be a struggle to to take care of that. So you can get tired and sort of get lax. Teachers do it too. We get lax sometimes. So it's nice to hear someone say, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. It's working. Then when there's a problem, um, there's some, I don't even know what you would want to call it, an issue comes up and the parent maybe is questioning my discipline or the administration discipline because we have a rapport they tend to listen and hear my side of the story, you know, of the situation, whatever it might be. Um, they're a little more open to what choice was made in terms of what consequence was chosen in terms of their child. I have a reputation for being very strict. You know, Miss Munt don't play. Um, and so what happens is I'll visit with the fourth graders and the teachers say, the fourth grade teachers say, um, you know, if you cause problems, you for sure are going to get Miss Munt. And so I became kind of mean Miss Munt. And I've actually had first day of school with fifth graders, fifth graders standing in line, brand new fifth graders, scared to death because they're in my class. Because I have, you know, they know nothing about me really. Um, and I guess mean, it just goes with the M thing. I'm just strict. You know, I have expectations, I expect you to follow them, 
I don't want to hear excuses. We have a job to do. We have things to get through. Um, and, you know, school is about the business of education. I guess I get most of my satisfaction from the relationships I've built. So if I have a student that's struggling personally and they've made it through the day, you know, they've done all the different things that we talk about, all the different strategies from just breathing, just take a breath, from, to stepping away from the group, to going to talking to somebody else, to writing me something to get it off their chest. They've done all the different things that we've talked about that they can to help them deal with that thing that's bugging them, whatever it might be, a student in the classroom, something at home, a fear that they have, whatever. And they've made it through the day without an incident. I take great pride in that, you know. I still hug my chronic disruptors, you know. I don't know. That's where I get my satisfaction. And, of course, I like to see their achievement go up. Of course I do. But I don't think achievement goes up unless you build a relationship, unless they trust me, um, unless I've connected their learning to their life. I don't think their achievement will go up. So, so if I feel those connections and see that happening, I know I'm going to see good things on those test scores. I always tell my class, learning is like eating. <laughs> they can relate to eating. You can come to school and you can sit in this desk, just like you can go into the kitchen and stand in front of the refrigerator. But unless you open the door and prepare something for yourself, you aren't going to nourish your body. If you don't participate and engage in learning, you aren't going to learn anything. You know, so throughout the year, I. I always start the year with my little soapbox refrigerator learning lecture. And throughout the year, we make reference to it all the time. When kids are starting to tune out, especially this time of year, you need to open the refrigerator door. They know what I'm talking about. And then they get refocused. You're right. If I just sit here, I'm not going to learn anything. I have to ask questions. I have to participate in the group. You know, just like eating. Stand in front of that door, and you're going to be hungry all day. you got to open it. <laughs>